welcome to a new episode of the Game Out Talk podcast. Jakob Clausen is my guest today and he's a lead environment artist at Fall Damage. Hey Jakob. Hello. So give us a short introduction of yourself. I already told them that you're a lead environment artist and where are you currently living? What are you doing? Yes, so uh, I for uh, one week ago I joined Fall Damage as a lead environment artist. And before that, I was at the Ubisoft here in Stockholm, um, Sweden, worked as a vegetation artist. And uh, before that, I was at Starbreeze as an environment artist. And further back, I started a indie studio with some friends in uh, a small town in Sweden. Okay, that's so you have a like, a, um, yeah, all the way up kind of. Yeah, very like path. yeah, very, <laughs> very uh, different type of studios every time, yeah. which is fun. Yeah. So, how how did the lead uh, position turn out? So, was it something for you you always uh, aspired, like you want to be a lead someday, or did it just happen randomly where you said like, oh yeah, this position sounds interesting. I could I could imagine myself being a lead, or how how did this turn out? Yeah, I, I think it started quite early, like with having like an indie studio and we were like 15 people and uh, there was a lot of irresponsibility early because there was uh, a investor and everything. So it was like real money involved and people had salaries and stuff. So like taking responsibility quite early in my career. And then it just happened at Starbiz also that I, I got the opportunity to jump in as a lead for a small time and I really liked it like the part of uh, like bringing bringing the group together and and uh, creating something good and uh, seeing uh, after all needs uh, I think sometimes like the the lead role is misunderstood like it's uh, it's not like the most well uh, like the most um, how can you say the person who knows everything it's more like mm -hmm. the person who can bring everyone together and uh, and see every everyone's uh, best strengths and uh, and yeah get the best uh, game out there so it's it's something i really enjoy and then it's like i li i like the all all the different aspects of when it comes to art and and especially game art so i i, I yeah i think it's kind of something that fell into to me quite early and uh, I notice it more and more. So would you say that you need to be uh, an amazing artist or an, 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 an a great artist before um, starting a lead position or uh, does this just come naturally to being um, like a great artist? First, I think it depends on the studio, like mm -hmm. how many people and stuff you, uh, you have uh, over you and under you, like... Uh, like that structure depends a lot, but uh, but I think it's it's important that you have seen and done uh, the thing the thing you are trying to like um, teach or or show your uh, group. Um, but I think it's yeah, also think... like I think it's also like a yeah like a are you a person who likes to like uh, keep the discussion open and stuff like that because there is mm -hmm. like for seniors there is two ways to go it's either like being a lead or going more to like an expert role when you are like um, really focused on one area in game game development basically and that, that's usually the question the see the senior gets when when they are when it's time like do i want to be a lead where it's more about like planning and bringing people together and um, or do i want to like be focused on one area and and maybe more the basically the art side and then it's more like the expert role okay so you would say it kind of depends on the on the personal preferences how you would like to, to develop yourself in a in a professional way right yeah exactly like yeah some some people just want to make great stuff and they are also very needed especially when they have done it for many many years 
So is there one lead position at your studio or are there like uh, two or three lead artists that kind of bring people together and uh, on different aspects like on vegetation or on hard surface? Uh, uh, we are, we are quite weapons. We are quite small team, so it's more like a, mm -hmm. a lead for 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 every position when it comes to like environment, uh, hard surface, and and characters, and then programming. Uh, but then when you move to bigger studios like where I was before, like Ubisoft, then you usually yeah. have a yeah a lead for for maybe every studio because there is uh, several studios that helping each other on one game usually. So it it depends on the studio, I would say. Okay, so uh, I saw that you are drawing, like uh, on Twitter. I saw some sketches. Uh, how how do you create them? Are you doing them on like on a, on a drawing tablet or on an iPad, on or how how is uh, this all coming together? That always depends where where I am. I I, I, mm -hmm. I have a sketchbook, so I sketch a lot of traditional stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, I have an iPad with with. Uh, uh, procreate but i i prefer photoshop and it's something i started like maybe it was three years ago i started to do like those everyday paintings and i did that for two years painting like one painting every day um and yeah then it became like a very good tool for me to 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 come up with the ideas and stuff when it comes to environment art so you take this uh, this drawing hobby like as an inspiration, or uh, how does it affect your three D art or your environment art? I, I would say like um, I I I I started out listening a lot to like concept artists and and uh, I think I was very ins inspired by like art cafe and stuff like that with uh, Miche, um where you had two uh, D artists that went into 3D because they saw the power in it. And uh, me as a 3D, tr like traditional 3D artist for games, I I kind of saw the other way around. Like, what if I could concept as a 3D artist? Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be like a powerful tool when I, I want to show something or I want to iterate on stuff. And uh, yeah. It's it's it really helped uh, has helped me to do like be able to do paint overs or 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 kind of sketch in three D like learning the fund fundamentals well basically. So you kind of uh, understand uh, shape better or colors or uh, mood settings something like this. Yeah, I mean it's like a process forever. Like there is so many. Uh, things that comes into like fundamentals but i would say three years ago I'd, i didn't have any understanding for it and uh, um, with concept art it's also for me a quicker a quicker way to learn it like instead of uh, doing like an environment and work on it for a couple of a month i can do like quick uh, thumbnailing in sketching or 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 uh, do like a fletched out idea when like in 2d for a for a week and kind of learn learn the fundamental part of it uh quicker okay this is pre this is pretty interesting um how how are the sketches um yeah are you going just going through life and then you see something pretty nice and then you think oh i could draw that how is this uh, coming together uh in in the start, like when I did like the every days, I think I I just went into Pinterest and I found a picture I like and I I mimic it. Like, I think it's important for artists to have like the mimic face when you learn something. Mm -hmm. Like, like and then and then it went over to looking at like other other concept artists and looking how they paint and like maybe do like uh, master studies on them. Um, and then now after a couple of years, then it becomes like. You have all these tools, and now you have. Now you can like create something um, by yourself, and of course the inspiration comes from like me walking around outside or just coming up with stories in my head and stuff like that. Okay, okay. So, as you haven't been working in a bigger studio with uh, like AAA studios like Ubisoft, and now you 
going back to a smaller studio like Fall Damage, mm -hmm. um, or more of a startup, as a, as you could call it. Um, why was that the case? Um, That's a good what was question. the reason to 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 go to go to a smaller studio back? I think that's not the common way, mostly. No, that's a good question. Uh, I think it's uh, like a personal thing for me. Um, I see myself more as a generalist um, when it comes to 3D. I I was a vegetation artist at Ubisoft, and I re I really liked it. I learned a lot. Uh, I had the pleasure to work with uh, Simon Bale there, uh, who is been a vegetation artist for his whole career so I, I gathered that skill and i i kind of know how to do good vegetation now but uh, me on a personal level like when i i do art at home i i do everything from uh, like 2d animations to 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 realistic 3d stuff so i i i'm like very spread out when it comes to 3d And I think uh, for me, like in a smaller studio, you have you wear more hats basically. So you 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 get you got to do more like use your your general skills more. I think. Um, but yeah, that's that's just me uh, enjoying that more basically. So. Uh... You don't want to be like a specialist who does just vegetation all day long, or um, so you you want to be more um, to you want to fill more roles, right? In that, because that is in, on a on a smaller studio case, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, like I noticed uh, like every every evening when I came home from work, even if I work mm -hmm. at home. <laughs> so uh, I I I could see what I was doing at home didn't really reflect what I did at work and it kind of told me like um, I was longing for something else maybe um, and I, I looked back at li like being at Starbreeze where where which was still a very big studio but but it had like a like a smaller structure where also there I could I could be a bit freer maybe in my roles and stuff like that and i i, I always missed that and i felt like mm -hmm. going to fall damage i could get back something of that so would you say like we, we talked about the topic before that the the triple a studios are shrinking down a bit mm -hmm. um how would you say is this developing in the future um are uh, like flatter hierarchies and um, I th I more think generalists and how is this developing uh, i think it's a technology question also like uh, tools are getting mm -hmm. easier so you need less people because um, i think the reason why you ha have more, many people is like the games getting bigger and bigger like the open world games are getting yeah. bigger and bigger you need more, more content and exactly and... you need more people but uh, with tools uh, you have also outsourcing but now with tools Then you can keep, like keep the keep the vision in studio, and you don't need that, that many people. So I think that that's gonna just be a thing. Like um, you see, new stu new like senior studios opening up and being like uh, maybe like uh, 20 to 100 people instead of the 500 people studios. Uh, then maybe we're going to still have the 500 uh, studios. But I think uh, there is going to like evolve a new type of of uh, independent AAA studio type of thing. And uh, they're going to have the quality, I think, as AAA. Mm -hmm. So as the technology um, is evolving more and more, um, you would say you don't need that many people now you would only say that you need that many people because um yeah the games are getting bigger the 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 the, the companies want to want to keep the the gamers more in their game like delivering pre pre-release content and stuff like that yeah i think also like uh, open world is something that's been been around now for a long time and i think there mm -hmm. is going to be a shift there uh, i don't know what that shift is going to be but uh, we're also going to see a shift maybe in the type of games um we're getting like cyber cyberpunk now as an open world but but after that the question is like 
is that going to be the big thing still? The, uh, I, the top of the iceberg. Yeah. Yeah, I I think uh, like game gamers in general maybe uh, are starting to look at or the developers also start looking at new things also. Uh, mm -hmm. Now now I uh, don't remember the question. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. I think you you kind of answered it. Yeah. Um, as the as the game as the game industry is developing and the games are getting different um, in the future, like um, some you said some genres like open world are gonna, yeah, maybe don't have such a secure um, um, uh, future, and we'll see how 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 is this developing and yeah. Yeah, maybe like I mean maybe we see like a big return of the like the more. Um, single player like um, linear games mm -hmm. like God of War or, or Lost of Us. Action Adventure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's Which I would really like. Yeah, in I my mean, opinion. I, yeah, I mean, I'm I I play all of those, so I. Uh, so. But I, I think there is like I think there is space for all of those games, but uh, I th it's gonna be, for me it's gonna be interesting to see what the these mid sized studios with like senior people are creating that that's going to be the interesting thing for to see so you would you would say like the the companies who have been um in the industry for a very long time or no. is that what you mean with with senior no i'm thinking more like um i don't know if you saw that uh, game that was made in china with um with the ape character that oh yeah blew yeah up. yeah that mm -hmm. was basically i think that was like a uh, couple of like uh, seniors from uh, Tencent uh, with uh, mm -hmm. like massive of uh, knowledge about game development, uh, starting their own studio, and then you get like I think that studio is like seventy. Uh, when I read like an article, but they create something that looks like like massive in scale, like visually, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I mm -hmm. think um, just getting like those small studios creating those games is going to be interesting for the future. And with small, I mean like 70 people is not small, but it's smaller what, than we have nowadays. Yeah. 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 It's pretty interesting how the, um, yeah, as the, as the industry is getting older, you know, more and more um, people are having more and more experience because yeah, yeah the industry, the, the big industry has been around for like, 15 years 20 years like the, the, the really exploding industry yeah it was like an eye-opening for me when i worked at ubisoft stockholm and i worked with people that had like 20 plus uh, <laughs> years experience in the industry but then it's like whoa i wasn't born there <laughs> like <laughs> and they have an industry been since then so you started a new job in the in the like in the pandemic time mm. uh how is it how was it for you to like switch studios during these times and work from home yeah i i think um uh, we in sweden have a, like a different perspective because it's it's not been that closed in sweden uh, yeah. but but yeah. What, I, what i like is that the game industry in sweden took their part and uh, i think most studio I heard moved moved their office home, so I've been home since February. Um, and it like for me, it's been working quite good. Like um, uh, at Ubisoft, we had quite good setups and stuff. Um, and now switching job, uh, I thought it would be very tricky, like uh, getting to know everyone and without like having like a real real life interaction with them. But I think it's been working very well um like being uh, in chat rooms and um have be able to have like dialogues with people we do like a lot of like screen sharing and stuff like that also to to see each other's progress and stuff so are you a person that generally likes working from home or um how how's your <laughs> perspective on that uh, so. it's, fu it's funny i i thought i was uh but then i realized i'm not <laughs> yeah, you need people around you yeah i i was always like yeah this is gonna be the most interesting year and fun year ever but i noticed like after a couple of months uh that i still probably would like to have like a studio place to go but i, I think it's a quite cool option if like the studios in the future 
could do like a like a 50-50 or something. Like I saw Mi Microsoft uh, announced that they are going to do like 50-50 home from uh, from home and in the office after Corona. And I think so that's, th I think that's going to be kind of the future for most studios. Yeah, you're looking f you you're kind of looking forward to um get to the studio life again, but you could yourself imagine like having a work situation that that represents the 50-50. Yeah, I, I think uh, like there is days you you really need to focus and like you you just want to get stuff done and then it's like mm -hmm. being home and not having to commute is like uh, saving time and stuff. Um and I think like uh, there is people that 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 prefer to be home, and then they have a place also. I feel like, um, but I think I I, I still think that uh, you need to have the interaction sometimes. Like um, it, it kind of depends on the studio maybe, uh, like uh, what the product is. But I think like the some of the discussion maybe gets hindered uh, in some teams, like uh, with uh, with with just being online. But uh, it's still too early to tell, I think. But I think there is going to be a shift. So would you say that, she, especially for you as being a lead artist now and having yeah talked to people, bringing people together, that um, the studio life is better for these kind of um, yeah tasks? Yeah, I think I think I've been lead for one week, so I think it's too early mm -hmm. to, to to put down mm -hmm. uh, like a real statement, but. Uh, like with tools like Miro and uh, share screening, I think uh, we're managing very well. I think, uh, but I think still like uh, I think the the getting the coffee like in Sweden we drink a lot of coffee and you go like on the coffee breaks like that. that How is it called? Uh, fika. <laughs> fika, yeah, that's yeah. that was yeah, the name. So, like yeah, like that that interaction I think uh, kind of is missing like that. Or that, uh, like most uh, many studios, has like breakfast and stuff like that. Like that mm -hmm. interaction, I think, uh, gets a little bit lost. Like not only just talking about the game and stuff, and mixing yeah. up mixing up the people. So at Ubisoft, Ubisoft before Corona, I really liked uh, that we had like breakfast uh, on Fridays, and you you were standing like with uh, maybe an animator and just talked about something, and then then like that person became like someone you could talk to like about work stuff i think breaking those uh, awkward <laughs> first interactions Various. yeah mm -hmm. exactly with mm -hmm. with with, with uh, those stuff is important so like the uh, the fika for example mm. i think this is a huge benefit for the for the um, yeah for the whole developing cycle or for the whole development of the game not just like on a technical standpoint, but just like on a personal standpoint for the yeah for the, for the members. Yeah, totally. Like um, I remember still at Starbreeze uh, when we uh, we worked quite uh, intensive on the game and like having those just breaks uh, going going down to to the like the food store and buying some fruits or something and just sit down in an area and just talk about like a what you were doing like last weekend or or about the game you like like those like just uh, clear breaks from work i think during work time i think it's very important and i try to try to do it myself now mm -hmm. with, with walks basically so i don't just sit at the computer like eight hours like breaking up the time because then you can like pull back and like rethink all the like things you're doing and yeah i think I think just uh, taking the break is important, like the small breaks. So, uh, are you meeting with other uh, team members, or are you got just on your on yourself? When no, you, when you're like doing like these I, walks? I, I'm not living in the city, so it's more like ah. uh, walking mm. to the to the water and trying to spot beavers or something. Uh, <laughs> so and it's draw more... draw them later on. <laughs> Yeah, so it's more for me, like, uh, because I, I noticed, like, in the beginning, I was just uh, waking up and then sitting at the computer and then just mm -hmm. uh, working the day and then sitting at the computer in the evening and uh, working on my own stuff. And mm -hmm. the days became, like, weekends, basically. Like, like everything just became, like, 
every day Jacob. became the same. So now I try to do like a morning walk and then a midday walk and then an evening walk. So it feels like I'm basically walking to a studio. So it's not feels like I'm at home all the time. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. And I, I noticed like a big difference. Uh, like in the beginning, it became quite depressing, like you're sitting at home, but now it feels much better. So when do you find time for personal work? When I look at your portfolio, I see the, the Great Hall of Hogwarts, mm. which uh, which is a great project and it looks really dope. And But Thanks. when I look at it, it looks like it's going to be so massive and time consuming so uh, when when do you find time that that pro project in in um, in particular is kind of funny because it's like it, it's kind of the first environment i ever started i started like a uh, second <laughs> okay. year of, of knowing it 3d and i noticed uh -huh. quite early that this is too massive to me uh and then i just picked it up like um, lo last year again and like uh, really finished it but th when I picked it up I noticed like everything is wrong so I had to restart it anyways uh, but to come back to the question I don't know I I would say I'm a little bit too consumed by, by <laughs> 3D and paintings I do it like basically all the time I'm trying to to, to break free a little bit but uh, yeah I don't know I still think it's so fun to do. So uh, one thing I do is uh, I usually have like three projects as, at the same time. So I don't I don't do like one project uh, from back to, uh, from finish to end. I I really tend to like have three projects I can jump between. So right now I have like three big projects I jumping between. It takes longer okay, so time. Yeah. yeah, it takes longer time, but I I don't get bored basically. So you're always uh, switching between the between the projects, doing a prop like here or doing a texture mm, like here. I, I would say it's more like a monthly switch or like two months mm. switch. So it's it's like uh, uh, especially like this, like I'm building like a small game now, for example, or I'm doing like mm -hmm. a like a small two D animation movie. Like those stuff takes so much time, and it's like stuff I never done. So it's like learning. And that's usually what my 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 f uh, free time project is like. It's like learning new stuff that I wouldn't have the chance to learn at work. So I try to be very diverse in what I'm doing. So when it comes to vegetation, mm -hmm. which is a, a whole a whole different topic, uh, yeah. just to the to the to the normal environment artist, um, how, uh, yeah, how did you learn that, or was it something that really interested you? If I'm honest, it's uh, I think I can tell it now. Like uh, I got a call from Ubisoft. Uh, I applied mm -hmm. there like during my time at Starbase, and they called me and asked if I can do vegetation. And uh, <laughs> I really wanted to go there, and I said, "Of course, I can do that." And I never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after the call, I was like, "Oh shit! I probably should know vegetation better." So I was just starting studying it before. Uh, the next like interview you interview and then i yeah like the process was quite long getting there like four months or something like a lot of interviews so i kind of like mm -hmm. did like a i don't know like a quick course myself like learning it and uh, then when i came there i felt quite uh, i would say quite comfortable with it and and i and i like that idea of just uh, kind of picking something and learning it and then move on uh, and then learn something else like i i like that yeah because you had re you really had to learn it you know because when you go there and had no mm. no like literally zero ex experience with um with vegetation and they want to see something and you're like um uh, yeah yeah, I mean, uh, I I would work with like Simon Barley, who I I knew before. Uh, like uh, he worked at Dice for the vegetation there, so mm -hmm. that that was kind of the like one big reason why I wanted to go. Also, like uh, working next to someone that's a specialist, basically, to kind of see how the, uh, those people think and like uh, work. And what I noticed with Simon was also that even if he's a, like a specialist in uh, in vegetation he has like super strong co core skills when it comes to environment art and stuff 
Uh, so, so that's that's something I thought was very interesting. Yeah, so how would you say that um, when you come into a studio and um, you you get in, in this niche like um, vegetation, um, how does it compare to how when you get into the studio being a generalist on something um, and you have been a you have been a like a really niche artist before uh, like like vegetation hmm um i mean uh, i wouldn't say i was so that was quite nice i was not like pure vegetation at ubisoft i because i before that i did like at uh, starbiz i did most stuff of environment does so i could jump in mm -hmm. and, and help with like hard surface or or uh, level art and stuff uh, but it's of course when when vegetation uh, when uh, like vegetation is needed uh, you are the person who has to create it and uh, i can uh, like i i like the idea of like like really uh nerding myself into like a subject and like really uh study it so it was like super fun uh, like uh, one and a half years doing that uh, but at the same time i'm I like to nerd into stuff, <laughs> different stuff. Um, but I, I think it's it's good to have like that, like passion for detail and stuff. Like if you want to do something like being like a specialist. So would you say that in the future, as we spoke about before the, the topic before, would you say that in, in the future, a specialist is uh, more important for a studio like a generalist? Mm, I think oh, it's it, uh, that question is it's it's like someone uh, or so many people try to answer it I think mm -hmm. and it's so hard because it all depends on like where the technology going like so, yeah that's why I asked it you know <laughs> <laughs> there is there is I think right now it's it's quite important to have like the specialist because like all these studios are building these tools for the future like with Houdini and stuff and I think you want like a specialist to answer all the questions and stuff uh, but mm -hmm. the question is like in the future because I, I see concept artists moving so close to 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 our field like they they do they use blender for example uh, and they start becoming very like efficient efficient in modeling but they also have like the the, the the fundamental skills and also the storytelling skills and stuff like that they they create the worlds so i think I think like when it comes to environment art, it's going to be a lot of like the storyteller and the, the like the the designer of like um, props and stuff. That's going to be quite important. And, and usually specialists are like a weapon specialist usually can. I think I have I never worked as one, but I think they can kind of like understand like the the design structure of a weapon basically. So I think. I think you're gonna get like a get concept artists that move into it, but then also you have the specialist, and then you're gonna have like a like a like these strong strong core groups basically. So, yeah, I think when it comes, I, I think this also depends on the size of a studio. Yeah, like totally. When you take fall damage, for example, they won't have like ten vegetation artists, no. <laughs> uh, like. When they have Ubisoft to work on a new Assassin's Creed, and you know, this they need because they need this kind of people because yeah. th the open world is so huge. Um, if there are op open worlds in ten years, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be interesting how how this uh, how this is all developing when it comes to the roles in a studio. Yeah, I, th I think I think the important part is just uh, being open to the to the change of the structure of uh, being a game developer. I think uh, the thing thing you don't want to be is scared or 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 angry at the, at the technology that's coming uh, because then it's not going to be like a fun a fun road. Because yeah. I think there is stuff that's going to get lost. I I think uh, it kind of reminds me of like. Um, I remember some teacher being like a bit sad when PBR was coming and they couldn't like paint in the in the in Photoshop. yeah in the or in the diffuse map. 
but mm. but and they thought like yeah using substance painter is like so un, un artistic it's so like procedural but now we yeah. see if someone is just using like using like just mask and stuff and we we see a difference between like a like a use a person using substance painter as a art like a artistic tool instead of just like throwing on auto stuff uh, so i think it's just it's just a yeah. industry that move forward all the time which i think is super fun like that's why i really like this industry that was the same when the Unreal Engine 5 demo was mm. on YouTube and uh, I'm, I'm in several Discord <laughs> channels and stuff. And everybody was going crazy. Oh, I'm going to lose my job. Mm. There is no normal map baking. No, uh, you only load the high poly in. And One thing I think if we in the game industry is forgetting is that uh, Unreal is really pushing to, to the movie industry also. So I, I yeah. think I think that, yeah. that 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 show off was not only for us; it was also for the movie industry. Yeah, like because yeah. it's another big industry with lots of money. Yeah, and I, like they are also moving forward. Like you have the Mandalorian using Unreal, and then I think Lion King used it also a little bit. So yeah, I th I see like those like game industry in the, in the movie industry is moving like closer together, and I think it's kind of fun and interesting seeing like the movie industry start borrowing stuff from us yeah especially when it comes to visuals like mm. um when you when you look at some modern games they kind of look like movies um, yeah maybe in the cutscenes i think you have played the last of us it was yeah. it was crazy in the cutscenes how the uh yeah how the, how the facial animation is going um i was sometimes blown away how is this even possible yeah, um, and, then, and then add uh, like the future, add VR to that. Like, may imagine how how the worlds are gonna feel then. Like that fidelity yeah. with with VR is gonna be crazy. That's then it's gonna be weird, I think. Because <laughs> <laughs> just putting so, on, like for example, just putting on VR, like with a feeling a room, like a game room. I don't know yeah. if you tried VR, but it feels. Yeah, I did. It feels so impressive, but then mm -hmm. then add like the fidelity and make it like uh, believable, more believable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think like Half Life was the first start for that, but I think that's going to be really cool in the future. So would you say that VR is pushing more in the future? Like uh, it's going to be on the on the on the consumer market for uh, for normal gamers. Uh, I think the first push is that uh, Facebook is making it like mainstream, and I think that's what we're going to see first. Like they, like Facebook bought uh, Oculus, uh, mm -hmm. and and they, I think they they want they don't just want the gamers. I think they want like they want to create something that everyone can use. A little bit like what yeah. fa Facebook is. Everyone is like using all like ready it. ready player one. Yeah. More in this direction. Yeah, yeah, or or because that that still has like gamey stuff. I think I yeah. Mm. Uh, but I think it's also like meeting. Like for example, now we could sit like in a cafe and having this discussion. This discussion. I think that's gonna be like something that's maybe Facebook is trying. But then then when when uh, uh, like the hardware is gonna get cheaper, I think then game studios are gonna. Uh, dare more to invest in 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 making games because I think it's still like a bit a bit hard for the consumer to buy like a, a VR for just one game, but now you got like the new Oculus Quest I think two, yeah. and it went down. It's like at two hundred dollars I think or something three hundred dollars. So I think we're starting to get like the cheaper cheaper like that uh, that everyone can buy. Um, so I think that's just a hurdle a little bit. And another hurdle for me um, was always uh, the cable management and stuff. Yeah. I, I I really didn't find it enjoyable or like comfortable when all the cables are hanging around me. And um, when it comes to games, I just want to sit on the couch and look at my my uh, my TV screen and play a beautiful game. Yeah. So I really need I really need um, some some experience like that when it comes to to bringing me into VR. 
Yeah, I think I think it's also going to be a general, uh, like a generation question. I think mm. uh, we that grew up with like the Nintendo 60, 64 or like the, that past time of gaming, I think we are going to like hold on, on on it more than like the the new generation. But um, I mean, VR could be like I I know some people are like instead of going to the movies now. They are watching the movies in VR, like cinema in Holy. VR, and you could do some similar with games, like uh, couch gaming. That's kind of disappeared, uh, like the unfortunately. Screen. Yeah, uh, like I miss it. <laughs> or yeah, the split screen. The split yeah. screen disappeared. Yeah, but just sitting together in a couch and playing together. That could be oh. like a uh, use for VR also. It's, it doesn't. It just doesn't have to be like the game. I think it's also like bringing like players together again. I think could be a cool. Yeah. Thing. You're you're making me nostalgic now. Um, <laughs> I, I remember playing the Lord of the Rings Part Three on PlayStation Two. Oh yeah. With my friend. Oh. Yeah, I play. I played like, uh, two two towers with my sister. I mm. And then I remember uh, playing Halo and then putting like cardboards on the screen. <laughs> so so you couldn't. So like, you can't see. Yeah, yeah exactly. See what the other other person is. Yeah, we were playing four four people on a like a like those fixed screens, so it's like you had like 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 an iPad size uh, screen basically. <laughs> Tiny. I think we're gonna we're gonna tell our children about this experience yeah. because they 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 won't understand it. How how was this fun? And yeah, yeah, but maybe like uh, couch gaming is coming back someday. Like um, I yeah, thought, especially. I th- yeah, with, uh, with the arcadey like Nintendo Switch, mm. Mario Party, this is still pretty pretty um, popular. Yeah, and uh, I mean, like you have Haze Light here in Sweden. They 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 do only like uh, they do only like uh, crowd uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, couch the... couch gaming. Like you have to be like two people playing it basically. Uh, oh, they did the um yeah with the prison like exactly. uh, a way out a way yeah. out that's what it's called yeah. And now they do like they doing some some something else that's even more like co y like couch co y Yeah, I I think there's definitely um yeah missing um yeah there are definitely some games missing that could bring people together again. Yeah, in this time it's a bit bit different now with the pandemic going on, but um. I think the 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 industry market now has a more and more wider range of people playing games. So, uh, like we are old people now in the games. No, yeah, they're yeah. they're even older people, but we we are more of the older generation. Like Fortnite, that's nothing for me anymore. So this the 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 the, the kids coming now. And moving more and more into the, yeah, to into our age, uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty pretty interesting. What is what is going on in the future? Yeah, I think even there, like seeing like a switch maybe between like styles. Like, the question is, is photorealism gonna be like the future? Like, because mm. now you see like it's mm. moving towards stylization more, uh, especially when like when we like have coming or gotten so close to like being like it doesn't get more real is it going to be like boring after a while and then maybe stylization is going to be the way to differentiate yourself you see like with um with fortnite and then fall guys that uh, those games pops because they have like those strong colors or something stuff. different mm-hmm. but that's probably uh, just a cycle that will swing basically yeah, because maybe the the graphics are gonna be so good, like they're they they look real. So yeah, this is kind of boring, you know. But so, something I really look forward to is like the stylization that's gonna be like close to like Pixar, like. Oh yeah. Like, like the yeah. Chris, like the Christmas of like a like a animated movie, like having that in in a game. I I felt that, uh, like watching the I think it was Ratchet and Clank. Ah, oh, that's what I wanted to say now. Yeah. yeah, because I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I haven't played those since uh, like uh, ten years back, 
back or something but <laughs> but seeing that i was like super intrigued same with like the yeah. Ke- Ken- kenya game like that yeah 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 so i yeah do- those are basically what's uh, <laughs> what i'm looking forward to so you haven't played the ratchet and clank on playstation 4 mm, no i haven't actually i'm i'm, I'm yeah. a quite i'm a quite bad gamer i would say i'm <laughs> i'm a comfortable gamer i <laughs> I I I I like to keep updated on all the games, but I don't play that. You many can't. Games. You can't. You can't do this nowadays. Um. <laughs> it's also like the environment artist in me looking at textures and stuff. That that's one problem. Also, like stopping by and lo- looking at a rock, and then you like lose the the focus on the game. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But but uh, like I, I played The Last of Us now recently and stuff like that. Okay, so this was the last game you played. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, or after okay. that, I I finished Red uh, Red Dead Redemption because I never finished it. Okay, so what will be the next game you will play? Uh, Cyberpunk, of course. Ah, uh, yeah, same goes for me. It's it's hard to pass on that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty interested. Uh, how they how they gonna um. Yeah, release with all the maybe pre pre release content with um DLCs and stuff. How how they gonna do it? I think they're gonna do it with the like the Witcher. Yeah, I think also one interesting part is this is gonna be like the last game of the this generation, and I think those those are always mm. interesting because it's all the knowledge uh, coming together. It coming together, yeah. Because in the beginning, it's always like. Um, some hiccups and stuff and usually like in like in the middle of a generation of consoles and then further it's then and like the studio starting to hit right but that's go- gonna also be interesting to see like uh, what's the future of consoles and stuff is the is this the last generation of consoles and stuff like that yeah so that's what i wanted to speak with you about um too uh, how how do you how do you feel about the um yeah the PlayStation Five release or the Xbox release? Are you a console guy first and foremost? I, I guess because you're playing PlayStation Four. Yeah, I have PlayStation Four, but it's basically my FIFA machine. So I, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a super console. Like I prefer PC. Like I play most games on PC. But then like if it's like a if it's a PlayStation, I basically have it for all the places. PlayStation exclusive games like Lost of Us and stuff like that, okay. um, but I th- I think uh, I think it's like this generation and then next is gonna be live service and stuff like that. I think it's hard to to compete with that. You see already like Xbox uh, or Microsoft being uh, pushing on on their lives like live service, and then I think PlayStation has places now and then you have Stadia. All the, these things, I think, is just the beginning, and that's gonna ki- kind of like shape the future, I think. So I think for studios, it's not gonna be as much of of the console anymore. It's gonna be more having the studios and the games, basically. Because you could see like Microsoft buying ton of uh, smaller studios first, and then they big went big with bu- buying uh, was it Cinemax or what did they buy? Uh, uh, Bethesda. Yeah, Bethesda, but. Did they buy Cinemax, all the games under Cinemax, or was it just Bethesda? Because I think they I, got like like they are the, connected, right? Yeah, Cinemax. Cinemax uh, uh, owns uh, Cinemax owns uh, or Cinemax Games owns uh, Bethesda. So I think they got like uh, Arkane Studios and all those studios, mm-hmm. like Arkane they Studio, did. Machine did. Games, and stuff like that. And I think that's going to yeah. be more important in the future, like. Uh, picking up the like the exclusives basically for your live service, but that's that's just a guess for me. Yeah, I think you're pretty right. Um, the yeah, the services are the future, I guess. Like when it comes to ge- to the games itself, and we'll see if there if there will be a console where is the the, the service running on, or is it just like coming uh, onto a small onto a small console just to to stream it from the internet yeah maybe like maybe the first part is like having a small console like yeah, now you see like the disc desks you get like with playstation mm. you can buy a disc class uh that's like the first step and then it's just gonna like 
people are not going to want to have me for a concert anymore. So did you pre-order one? Did you get N- one? And no, because I'm going to be busy with Cyberpunk. <laughs> so ah. I, I don't uh-huh. have a prob- I don't have a problem to wait a little bit. Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna focus on Cyberpunk, and then I'm still hoping for a a, a black uh, PlayStation like. A, Ah yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah, the, I, I don't want the white one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, I'm probably gonna pick it up in uh, in in fall uh, in uh, spring. But I'm I'm looking into getting VR now also. Oh, Not okay. Mainly mm-hmm. for uh, I really want to try like the sculpting and stuff in VR. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's when I talk to people that do it. It sounds uh, very interesting. Like I hear from okay. co- concept uh, friends that basically use it as their main tool now in in concepting okay. for games or movies. All right, I think it's a wrap, um, Jakob. I yes. think um, we we uh, we spoke about very interesting topics. All over the place. <laughs> All over the place, like from development to gaming and VR. Yeah. So uh, I have to say Dankeschön ah, and thank you. I will put all your information <laughs> into the, into the, um, into the info box and people can check you out and they thank should. Thank you very much. And fa- you have pretty, pr- and sorry. Fa- and thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy that, that you have been on my, in my podcast as you are a listener. Yeah, oh. that too, actually. <laughs> okay. So thanks and take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.